Admiral Lord West is the former First Sea Lord and Commander-in-Chief of the Royal Navy. I'm delighted that he's joining me now. Uh, Lord West, thank you for your time this afternoon. I hope it's OK yeah, to call you Alan. Um, <laughs> that's all right. Um, will this make much of a difference, do you think? How will our boys and girls in the Navy be helping the Israeli military? Well, I, I think to sort of say how much of a difference would it make in terms of what's actually happening on the ground in uh, in, in Gaza and in Israel, um, I, I don't think it really will make much of a difference. What it's doing, however, is it's showing that we have uh, a, a certain interest as a nation within the region and within what's going on there, because the sending of warships establishes that very clearly. It also gives one option. So, for example, the the ships that have been sent are the literal response group south, uh, and that consists of uh, a two Royal Fleet Auxiliaries, Argus, which is a very large ship which has a hospital facility on board, flat deck and carry helicopters, and also the Line Bay, which is a, a sort of landing ship. It, it's got landing craft inside it, and it's got a, a company of Royal Marines, and we've three, got three helicopters. That little group is well placed for um, carrying out evacuations, should there need to be an evacuation uh, uh, by any chance. Um, but we don't really know what's going to happen, but the flexibility offered by having units that are under our command, under control of the United Kingdom in the region, um, is very valuable. And it also shows that we want stability in that region in the same way as the Americans have put their carrier battle group in there. Um, and you know, it is important to us. Uh, yes. Cyprus is an important uh, uh, Place for us, we have a lot of assets there, and of course, looking the other side of the uh, of that great arm of, uh, of country, looking to the Arabian Gulf, we have units there as well. So I think it's important to make this message. Mm. So it is it, it, to, for you. It's perhaps more symbolic than practical. Obviously, there will be practical things that we can do and help. But in terms of the number of people we're sending, I mean, the Israeli military at the moment is strength. We're told with many reservists coming back in. We've been told not, uh, numerous people actually flying from the UK back to Israel to sign up and, and to to uh, go back into the Israeli military that they might have been before, perhaps dual citizens. In terms of numbers, it's not going to be massive, but it is very symbolically important and good so, to show that we are we are standing shoulder to shoulder with the Israelis uh, in this. Absolutely, and it has, and it has got a capability. It can do evacuation and other yes. things. Um, so it is able to do those things. And, of course, we've got assets in Cyprus as well. I think what is interesting is that, you know, I've, I'm often banging on, and you've probably heard me doing it before, about how our, our Navy has been cut so dramatically. Uh, if you look back to the last evacuation we did in that arena, which was in Lebanon, um, just before the coalition government came in, um, we rapidly gathered from it from the Med, because they happened to be there, an aircraft carrier, a big landing ship, uh, two destroyers, a frigate, some support ships. We did that bang just like that. Now to get these two Royal Fleet Auxiliaries is quite a push, because the Royal Navy, since you know, uh, 2010, when the coalition came in, has been cut so dramatically, not just in 2010, when it was cut by a third, but also year on year. And that, that I think, is extremely worrying because people who are, don't like us as a nation look at things like that, whether it be Putin, whether it be Iran. Uh, and I think we, we need to watch out or we're standing into danger with the reductions in our military. Well, essentially, you mentioned that, Alan, because we are certainly in a situation where a lot of our viewers and listeners will get in touch from time to time and some of them are saying well if we're involved in foreign conflicts if we're involved in ukraine for example we're involved or, or at least well, i mean we are involved in ukraine but we're also sending lots of military hardware there and giving them training and so on that's also the case now a little bit with israel what about defending ourselves um do, do you think that we are battle ready should there be any problem in the next few years should there be any sort of uh battles that we have to take part in that are about the uk rather than about other nations well i i, I think the i think my answer to that would be a little bit more complex i do believe that our military has been shrunk too much there's not been enough money spent on it year on year people have cut it there's been a little bit of an addition in the last couple of years um, but that's not really made up for what's been taken before. But, of course, the defence of our nation, the best defence is well away from the shores of our nation. Um, and we are still, um, uh, we are, you know, people, not Britain all the time, but we are a global nation. We're the biggest investor in the Far East of any of the EU countries. We run global shipping from London. Um, and 
the security and stability of the globe is very important for the security and stability of our nation and the wealth of our nation. And therefore, we need to be taking action well away from this country. And indeed, it's much better when it is being done well away from your country rather than actually on the borders and in your country. So I think we need to ensure we've got a military that can do that. And uh, the tilt to the Far East, everyone knocks it. But actually, if you think how the Americans have pretty well bankrolled NATO for through the Cold War, uh, we were the second biggest uh, investor in NATO and in terms of uh, military capability. Um, you know, we owe them something and uh, and they need, they, they are very stretched. And uh, when one looks at the Far East and the pressure on Australia, the AUKUS agreement, you know, these things, I believe, are, are things that are very good and show people like China and people like Russia uh, and Iran that we still believe in a stable world order. And I'm afraid that you have to back that up with uh, with muscle, you know, to talk quietly, yep. but walk with a big stick. And we, I'm afraid, have rather ignored our big stick. Um, Alan West, Lord West, former First Sea Lord, Commander-in-Chief of the Royal Navy, thank you very much indeed for your uh, thoughts on that.